Welcome back to LifeRay. This is my video number seven in LifeRay DXP demonstration. And in this video, I will show blogs, wiki, and knowledge base. LifeRay has much more collaboration features that I'm not gonna go through it th uh, this video because in video number nine, I will show a use case for an internet and collaboration. And I'll, I'm, I'm gonna try to cover most of our collaboration features there. The first thing I would like to talk about in this video is the blogs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first log in as Bruno. So um, if you didn't attend the previous version, Bruno is my super user and he is an administrator. Uh, so he has access to all the admin feature in LifeRay. So once I log in with Bruno, as you can see here, he has access to the admin console uh, where it has all the management feature for um, the existing site, which is LifeRay DXP. So um, what I'm going to do first is to show you the permissioning with blogs. So blogs can be visible under the, the control uh, panel uh, of the site. Uh, uh, under content, there is the blog folder. But usually this place where you can access the blog is only for administrator. So for normal user, um, a Bruno built a page. And this page actually will have all the blog features. So here there's a, a blog where you can add a new blog, a tag cloud where you can click on a tag and see the blogs that has that tag, recent blogger and blog aggregator. So um, for people who doesn't have access to blog under the, um, the admin console of FlyFree DXP, they can access it from the page here. So if I went back to, to the other browser, here I'm an anonymous user, and usually anonymous user doesn't have access to the admin console. They can go to the blog page and they can view the blogs here. The first thing I would like to show is how we can control permission for blogs. So if I went to the blog tab, here as you can see there is two blogs, but if I went to the other tab, as you can see there is only one blog visible which means there is another blog has permission to not be shown to, shown to anonymous user so if i went back here and i can see this blog is not visible for guest user i can go to the permission tab and i can go to the guest user and i can assign view permission to the guest user and by doing this and click save if i went back here to the same page and click on blogs again now i can see uh, the blog uh, here the other thing also, I can actually click on any blog and I can read and go through the blog uh, and I can also uh, see how many pers uh, who's the admin of this uh, blog and how many person views this blog. So all of this feature, I can hide it and show it based on permissions. So here as an, a guest user, I don't allow guest user to do any comments on this. I can allow comments for uh, anonymous user over blocks so they don't, they don't need to be logged in to do any comment on any blocks. The other option we have here is the tag cloud. So I can click on any tag, for example, LifeRay DXP, and here it shows me only the, the blocks that has the tag LifeRay DXP. Recent bloggers, if I have a lot of bloggers and I want to know the top three bloggers, this part of the page will show you the the, the top three bloggers I have on my pages here. Blog aggregator, it's a way to show blogs, but it's uh, it's more it's more like a, a short description. Uh, so it's another way to show blogs. This page is not the default. This is a page that I designed and any admin user has access to design a page. He can change anything. So as Bruno, I can design and say, I want the recent blogger in the top and the tag cloud on the bottom. Uh, so I can def design anything I want and all of this blog application on this page they actually exist under the application tab so if I went under the application tab and write blog those blogs that I add them on the page they exist under the application so uh, you can drag and drop and add those here we're gonna talk in the uh, in the uh, in the internet use case video about the microblogger because they're more like a status update uh, than just blogs, right? So the second use case I would do here is I'm gonna log out from uh, Bruno, and on this browser I'm gonna log in as Michelle. So Michelle, she is a marketing manager, and she has access to add blogs. While on the other browser, I will log I will log in as Richard, and Richard is just a marketing associate. So he, sorry, 
Richard, he's just a marketing associate, so he doesn't have access to ad blocks. So I'm going back to the block page, and here actually, I, I'm going to go again to the block page. So as you can see here, Michelle, although she has access to some admin feature, she doesn't have access to the blog here. So she, if she wants to add a new blog, it must be from the pages. So here, as you can see, Michelle, she can see the add, um, the add blog button, but Richard, when he go to the blog, there is no add button here. So to add a new blog, you have to have to be a marketing manager to do that. So she's going to add a new blog here. And now she's going to select an image. She can upload one or select an existing one from the document repository. So for now, she's going to go to the document repository and select an existing one. She's going to select this one and she will talk about life ray screens. Here it's ready now. Right? And then I'm going to add some content here. And this is our WYSIWYGI editor that I was talking about um, during my content management system. It works exactly the same way on, in the blogs. So I'm going to take some, code, some, some text here and add this text inside my blog. So my WYSIWYGI editor doesn't show all the controls all the time. It just show it whenever you need it and it show only the controls that you need it in that context. So let's say here, whenever I highlight the first part, it show me that I have permission to those controls and those are the only controls that are beneficial for me in that part of the page. So I can just add blog or end underline and here I finished, so I finished my control of that part. If I came here and click on the plus sign, it showed me other controls. One of them is just to add image. So I can add inside the body of the blog another image if I want. And the good thing about that part is that I can choose any image and I can edit the image before uploading it. So if I click on the add button, I can come here and just change the colors and like uh, um, rotate it or whatever, do anything I want on the image. And once I finish, I click apply and then upload the edited image on my um, uh, in my uh, blog. Just for now, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to upload anything. But the last option I have here, I can always jump to the source code tab and I can always view my source code and how it looks like in, uh, in production. So if I moved the strong from being here to another place, that would actually show me how I can um, make my uh, other text strong. So I can add HTML or CSS code here and uh, see on the other side how, how that will look like. Just click done. So now I'm, I'm done with my blog. Before uploading the blog, I'm gonna just tag it as screens. So I'm adding a new tag. And also, I have other uh, options here. One of them is the related asset. So if, for example, I have an, a new PDF on my document repository that talks about um, um, that talks about uh, uh, the, the life ray screens, I can relate it to this. So if someone did a search on life ray screens, they're going to see the document as well as uh, they're going to see the blog as well. So if I came here and say, I'm going to relate this to a document, and in my document repository, I guess I have something with sales. Yeah, I have sales 2017. So I'm relating my blog with uh, the, uh, the sales 2017 PDF. And then after I finish, I click publish. And now this blog is, is now visible. So if I went back from the other browser as Richard and go to the blog tab, now I can click on live phrase screens and I can go and read the blog. The other good thing also is that if I went back here and I went to the tag cloud, I can actually tag any, uh, I can look for any tag here and I can click on it. And that would actually just show me the blogs that have that specific tag. So I'm just gonna go back, remove the tag that I had here and just go back to live ray screens. And here I can go through the blog, read it, and after I finish it, I can actually have access to the related asset. As you can see here, I have access to the uh, PDF, the sales presentation PDF that I, here. So I can view this uh, uh, PDF if I want. The other thing I can do also, I can do comments. So I can come here and say, um, I can tag Michelle and tell her, thanks for the great news. Right, and by doing this and having reply, 
if I went back to the other browser, just refresh the browser, we're going to see that Michelle got a notification telling her that um, someone tag you on the blog and here is the comment so she can view the comment and she can reply to him. If she do, she always want to get a, a notification when someone um, comment on this blog, she can always subscribe to this blog and once she subscribe, anyone add a comment, she's gonna uh, receive a notification. The other option for Richard on this blog, since he cannot add, he can actually subscribe for the whole blog. So if Michelle decided to upload a new blog, he's gonna receive a notification say that Michelle uploaded a new blog, you can read it on that link. So it's very dynamic way of creating blogs. The presentation layer, this is the default layer, but you can always change it using something called application display template that we are gonna try to do a video about it later. Right. The next step that we I want to talk about is the wiki engine. So I'm going back here and I'm going to sign out from Michelle again. And I will sh sign in as Bruno. So in my use case here, I made just Bruno, he's the only one who's able to change wikis. So no other employee can change any wiki. And I made it accessible also under the source tab. So since Bruno is an admin, he can access the wiki under the content tab, but also I made it available in, uh, under the source tab here. So for the other browser here, since I'm logged in as Richard, I can click on the, on the wiki tab and I have access to the wiki. Um, and, and I can view everything on the wiki. Um, uh, Richard doesn't have access to add a new wiki, but for existing one, he has access to edit it. So I, he can always click on edit the wiki and he can add his own code inside it here. So this edit can go directly to be published or you can make it go through a workflow to be approved by Bruno first. But in my use case, there is no workflow. So if Reacher edit something, it's gonna be published directly to the front page. So let's see how uh, a wiki looks like. So I'm going back as Bruno and I'm gonna go to the wiki tab. And here I have one main wiki and this wiki has three pages. I can create a second one. So I can say uh, wiki two. And in this wiki, I can start adding my pages. So if I went back as Richard to the view tab and I went to the wiki tab, as you can see, I can see the main page, the main one, and the main one has one page, the front page and, the, and one other child page. And I can go to the wiki too, and I can start adding another, uh, a new other pages here. So every wiki has a front page and child pages, right? So I'm, um, I'm not gonna add a new wiki in that one. What I will do, I will show you how we can edit one existing wiki. So I'm gonna go to the main one and I will go to the front wiki and edit this one. And here, whenever I edit any wiki, I always have, I always have access to the same uh, features that I have I had for the blog and as well as for um, the knowledge base uh, or content management which is I can do a related asset so I can relate my wiki to a PDF or or, or a, a documents that I have in my document repository I can also add a tag um, a new feature for wiki only I can add an attachment so for photo or whatever and use this attachment inside my wiki um, and last thing is I can as a wiki, I can choose which format I want to use, whatever it's a plain text, HTML or, or Creole. So either format, I can use it to write my, my wiki. If I went back here to my pages and open the front page without editing, here I can click on the extra info and here it shows me all the information that I need. So this is a new wiki, what's the format, what's the last version, when it's created, when was last modified. Uh, and also an RSS feed if I have an RSS reader. The other thing also I can have is the versions. So as an admin user, I can roll back to an older wiki version. And also I have the activity. So I have all the history, who changed it, what, who submit a new change, and all of this history is saved inside a wiki page. Lastly is the links. So any link I use it inside my wiki, it would be uh, attached here so I can have access to any wiki. Oh, what I need to do, write my wiki, add my um, uh, add my link as an embedded link, and then the wiki engine will detect that link and show it here as um, outgoing links. 
going back to my page here and I'm gonna go to the main wiki one other option we added extra here is the comments so you can always um, as as user you can rate your wiki and you can comment so I can come here and tag someone and I can uh, add my comments here if I want and as I said before the comments work as a word document so I can say thank you and then I can come here and highlight this and just click on control B and that would be bold or click on control U and that would make underline so this is all very flexible to add a new comments and then to um, to um, add format for the comments anytime I want all right uh, this is just the um, out view for uh, for the wikis of course you can uh, edit the look and feel you can uh, define permission who can view which wiki who can edit it who can add comments so all of this also are uh, configurable and you can add it on the wiki the next step I would like to show is the knowledge base so for the knowledge base I will log out from Bruno and I will log in here as Richard sorry as Michelle So Michelle is a manager and she has access to the knowledge base through um, her doc, uh, sorry, through the admin console as well as she has an access to the knowledge base through the site. So I add a page here and I name it documentation so she can actually um, view the documentation tab and this is the knowledge base. So um, um, uh, as, um, as Michelle can see here she can actually uh, uh, view the view the knowledge base you can actually go through the documentation so with the knowledge base I best I build a documentation she can actually delete it she can subscribe to it uh, she can add a new one as we're gonna see uh, here uh, but for Bruno uh, for uh, sorry for Richard when he go to the documentation he cannot delete it he can just print it and he can subscribe to it the other thing he can do he can add suggestion so he had permission to add suggestion so let's say for example for what is life ray he can add uh, uh, please change the font right and when I click this that actually goes to uh, Michelle so if she went to um, her knowledge base folder she can actually go to the suggestion tab and she can view someone suggest something on the document to be changed so she can actually say move this to progress and now that would be under progress so uh, now that's under in progress she can work on it and once she finished she can say uh, move to resolved or, or move it to be as new again uh, like put it back as new so all of this can go also through a workflow as the, if desired the other thing also Michelle can do, she can add a new um, um, a new uh, uh, article under the knowledge base. So she let's say she's going to add a new basic article and she's going to name it here as uh, Life Ray Installation. And now she can add the content. So I'm going to just copy the same content here. And after she finished, she can actually um, attach file to the knowledge base. Uh, she can tag the file. Uh, she can do a related asset that was talking about, like related to another wiki blogs discussion. She has a friendly URL of, for example, uh, let's say um, you want to send the link to the user about uh, how to install LifeRay. You're gonna have a friendly URL. You can copy that URL and send it to the user, and it's gonna take him exactly to that part of the knowledge base to see how to do an installation for LifeRay. And once I click publish, now Michelle has the permission to change the permission of that knowledge base. He can decide who can view that part of the of the knowledge base. So if I went back here and I click knowledge. Now I can see the new uh, knowledge base got here and now uh, Richard can add a uh, suggestion if you want over this. By doing this I just finished the blogs wiki uh, knowledge base. Uh, please subscribe to my video. If you have any comments you can write it uh, below and I'm going to reply to it. And thank you for staying till the end of the window.